Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 642. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my College website link, and you can download the workbook Excel Magic Trick 640 to 643. Hey, we have a cool little video here that will compare and contrast formulas and pivot tables. We have a little data set here, and this is a personal budget, and we have dates. These are individual dates, so these are transactions, right? Power 150. Cable 85. So we have this, and we need to summarize with an add with two criteria. The first criteria is we need add everything for power, add everything for cable, and it has to be within the month, right? So we're one of the problems is we have a set of individual days, so how do we group these together as month as one criteria, and then have our second criteria from here? I'm going to use the sum ifs function. This is uh, uh, July 2010. Excel 2007 has been around for a long time now, almost four years. The sum ifs, the count ifs functions are just awesome. They are the fastest calculating, faster than some product or other database functions. So it's worth getting the new Excel. First, though, so we'll do it with sum ifs, then we're going to do it with a pivot table, and then we'll. Um, change the data here and see the difference between formulas. Formulas automatically update and pivot tables do not. So in this case, if you're always entering transactional data, uh, probably formulas are, are a good way to set it up. We'll also see how to make create a dynamic range with the table feature. All right, now if we're using formulas, we have to get a unique list here. Now maybe you already have it typed over here, but there's an easy way to do this because we need power, cable, rent listed one time over here. So I'm going to highlight that column. I'm going to go to data and then the, the sort and filter group. Here's the icon for advanced filter. The keyboard shortcut is Alt A Q. Alt A Q. Now, this has got this highlighted, so that's right. We want to copy this to another uh, location. Our criteria, we're not going to put anything there because we're going to, we want everything and just the unique items, records only. This, in essence, is the criteria. We'll copy to, say, right there, E1, and then click OK. And just like that, we have our unique uh, list of records. Now, I'm going to edit this and put date because we're going to have to have variables listed here and here. And I would like to do, there's a couple ways we could do this with dates. Um, we could write, type some words here and then use the text function. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to put, since here we have four, five, six, you could put as many as you want this way. I'm just going to, because I'm fitting on the screen, put three. So I'm going to put four slash one. And when I hit tab, look what happens. That's the default. You can see up that's a default number formatting, date number formatting. I can see the date right there. Watch this. Now I'm going to, 2010 is what I want. I'm going to copy this over just like this. And then I'm going to immediately point to the smart tag. So you guys can see this here. And then there is this great smart tag, fill months. And it will fill the first of each month there, just like that. Now you can see right there and right there. Now, this will be criteria when we ask our formula here to look at this. Notice it's 4-1, 2010. So what I'm going to do is we're going to say, hey, formula, anytime you find a date here that is greater than or equal to the 1st of April, then that's one criteria. And when it's less than or equal to the end of this month, and we'll actually use the EO month, which is end of month function. Now, this is just formatting. It sits on the surface of the spreadsheet, so I want to format it so it looks good. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Control-1. That is for format cells. And I'm going to come down to Custom, and I'm just going to, instead of using Date, I'm just going to come down to Custom, and I'm going to type M, and you can see that's for M, lead, has a leading zero, and three M's give me a three-letter abbreviation, which is what I want. This is on the surface of the spreadsheet. You could see up here it still has the uh, numbers, and underneath there's a serial number. So that's just what we see on the surface. When we make our calculation, we're going to actually use that number, that date underneath. Now we're going to use some ifs. I'm actually going to highlight this whole table. Go to uh, do some of that. We're going to use some ifs. Some ifs. Some ifs is great. Uh, they actually compared to the sum if they change the uh, screen tips here. Uh, 
easier to understand. See, it says some range. So that's easy. We just highlight this. And we're going to have to hit our F4 key to lock it in all directions. Because wherever we copy it, it's going to need to look at that. Comma, criteria range. Now we have one, two, three. We have this column and two of these, because we need a greater than or equal to and a less than or equal to. So criteria range, pick whichever one you want first. This is and. All three of these things will have to be true for it in order for it to calculate um, inside of a cell and do the summing inside of the cell. So that range needs to be locked, so I'm going to hit the F4 key, comma. Now what's the criteria? The, it's power for this row, but when we go down one, it needs to move to cable. So I'm going to F4, one, two, three times. Column locked, but not when it goes down. It'll move to cable, comma. The next criteria range, the date, and I'm going to hit the F4 key to lock it, comma, and the criteria. Now. We have a date here, custom number format, but we need greater than or equal to. No problem. We put greater than or equal to into our double quotes, and then we join it using the Shift 7 ampersand. That's the join symbol. So we can, I left out the equal. Greater than or equal to ampersand that. That is looking at the date underneath. Now this one we need to lock when we're going down, because this whole column looks at April. But when we move over here, it needs to move to May. So we lock it F4, F4, dollar sign in front of the row reference only. Now I'm going to actually copy this. I know that's kind of cheating, but I'm going to come to the end and to type a comma and control V. Because now all I need to change is a, a couple of things. We need to look at that same column again. That's the, the criteria range criteria range 3, and here's the criteria, but this needs to be less than or equal to. Now wait a second, <laughs> this has got the 4, 1, 2010, but we can just use the end of month function, end of month. Now it has two arguments, start date and comma. Now th there's a couple functions, date functions like this that move backwards and forwards with months. If you want to go to the end of next month, you put a 1. End of next two months ahead, 2. Minus 1 will give you the end of last month, and 0 gives you the end of this month. All right, so uh, looks like we have our criteria 3. I'm going to close parentheses. If we got all the cell references right, Control Enter. I'm going to double click and send it down, and then re-grab my fill handle and copy it over. All right, so there's formulas, <coughs> um, and we're using the sum ifs. Now let's see how to do it with a pivot table. It's a lot faster, totally unbelievable. I'm going to use insert pivot table that, or the keyboard shortcut is alt nvt, alt nvt. I'm going to say existing sheet, click right there, and I'm going to click. Can't click right there because it'll want to put the uh, report filter up there, so I'm going to click 3 below and then click OK. This is just so we can compare it right here. All right, now we're going to need to put our date down in the row labels. Immediately we need to come over here and I'm going to right click group. Oh, this is so much easier than that end of month and everything we just did with the formula. I'm going to put months and years. now. If it really is only months, you don't need to put years. And in our case, it is. But I'm always careful. I put both, just in case there's a sneaky date in there from a different year. So I click OK. And it looks like, no, I don't have another year. So I can actually uncheck the years. And I got just my uh, months there. Now payee, I just drop, drop it over here. None of that criteria in the. Uh, formula. Now wait a second, I want to switch this. Here's the cable, food, etc. January. I actually want to switch it, so I'm going to drag this over here. And I'm going to drag this one up here. Now I have my screen really small here, but you drag them back and forth. And then the values just bring the amounts down here. Now I'm going to close this pivot table for just a moment here. So, and I want to get rid of the grand totals. I don't need the grand totals here. Although I could, but I'm for comparison purposes, I'm going to turn them off. I'm going to go up to pivot table, let's see, layout, if I can even remember where it is. Lay, I have my screen so small here. Lay, this is the design ribbon, layout. I don't want any grand totals off for rows and columns. Now it's a little bit mixed up here. Let's go ahead and see a cool pivot table trick. I'm going to double click this. I'm going to drag this over here. 
Actually, let's change the uh, style here. I'm going to go to Design, uh, Layout, same place we just went, Report Layout, and I'm going to say Show in Tabular Form. Much better. Double click that. Now look at this, the power cable. Let's say we want it in this exact order. Um, and the pivot table does it in alphabetical order. Here's a funny little trick here. We can actually simply click on one of these row headers, and if I can get my move cursor, that's the move cursor, you can actually drag, and it just drags the whole uh, uh, row right up. So it's, it's power cable rent. So rent, I'm going to move this one up here. Looks like food is the second to last or my favorite word for second to last, the penultimate. There we have it. So uh, it looks like in both cases, oh, we have January. So we have a problem. So one, two, we have a problem. We better go look over here. And sure enough, look at what is the problem. That's the problem right there. It should be this was entered as 1, 4 instead of 4, 1. So let's come up here into the editing uh, bar, 4 slash 1. Now you could see the uh, formulas instantly update, but not the pivot tables. You have to come over and right click, refresh. There it is, refresh. And now it refreshes, and we have the same numbers. Now I want to make this dynamic, so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to create a table. I'm going to Control T, or insert, ta insert uh, ribbon table. Click OK. Now notice. Once I do this, I do get a dynamic range. Let's just check this out. Let's come over here and notice that our formulas are from C2 to C14. I'm not even using any of that fancy table nomenclature uh, that is available as an option when you use these tables. Those are just cell references. Watch this. I can come over here. I can see I've left out the rents, right? So I come to the end of my table, very bottom, and if I hit Tab, it adds a new record. And this is going to be 4 slash 5. Rent, I'm going to type R. I'm entering data, and this is called uh, autocomplete. It recognizes that there's the only one R word from above. So when I hit Tab, it, ex it accepts that highlighted uh, stuff here. And then I'm going to put 900. Tab, and I'm going to put, uh, we had 5. And you can see our formulas are already updating. 5 slash 5, actually. This one is 6, 6 slash 5, and then R and 900. I'm going to control enter. You can see the formulas update. The pivot table doesn't. And you know, the pivot table sure is easy, and it's not that hard. It's easy to create, right? And it's not that hard to right click refresh. So uh, there you have it, two great methods for summarizing. It looks like it's two criteria, but when we did our formula, we realized we had to, because we chose to put our date like this, we had two. We had to say greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. But we have a formula option, a pivot table option from some transactional records for a personal budget. All right, we'll see you next trick.